Hi, Jean. Hi, Dr. Rathbaum. That's Rathburn. Oh. Do you think you could get me a transcript for a student that is in one of my uh, philosophy classes? His name is Jeff Himmelman. Could you look that up for me? Sure. Give me a sec. Hmm. Do you want his whole transcript or just this year? What's the situation? Purpley. We got two contaminated people in the open hallway. We got six people trapped from when the emergency doors slammed shut. We're in phone contact with them, so they seem to be okay. Who's contaminated? Jean Wiggin. She's a student in records. The other is Professor Rathbury. What's he teach? Philosophy. Philosophy? I don't get paid enough for this. Okay, I'm going in. He's going in. Thank God I'm not him. What's a FERPA leak? What did I do wrong? Ma'am, there's some things in this world that are best left private. If you look it up in the dictionary, education is defined as the process of educating or being educated. Well, somewhere along the way, the process of that process got very complex because educational systems require keeping large amounts of information on hand. Take a look around. People fill out forms to enroll, forms to drop out, and forms to say they're not sure which is best. There are grade forms, financial forms, medical forms, housing forms, and employment forms. So, of course, you need computers to keep track of all these forms and printouts to keep track of computers and people to keep track of the printouts so that you can keep track of the people who filled out the forms in the first place. So with people giving you information to handle and computers mipping and bupping through all that information on screens and printouts that end up in files that go to other offices where they might end up on another computer that issues printouts to people who are paid to sort through files and keep a grip on the original forms that were filled out by the people who needed to be kept track of at the start of this whole process of processing the forms that went to the computers that were watched by the people. Whoa! That's a lot to keep a handle on. And the thing about it is, a lot of that information is not only very important, it's of a private nature as well. Because in a world where information flies back and forth at great speed, there are people who seem to be very nosy, and we all know what happens when personal information falls into the wrong hands. It's no wonder that the public is concerned about invasions of their privacy. So to ensure that educators handle personal information properly, Congress passed FERPA, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. In practice, FERPA means that our university is committed to protecting the right of privacy of all individuals about whom it holds information. Access to educational records is restricted to the students concerned, to parents of a dependent student as defined by the IRS, to others with the student's written consent, to our officials who have a legitimate educational interest in the records, to officials of another school where the student seeks or intends to enroll, to certain authorized government representatives, to organizations conducting studies on behalf of the university, to accrediting organizations to carry out their accrediting function, to a court of competent legal jurisdiction, and to appropriate parties in a health or safety emergency. That's a lot of words. 
but in condensed form it simply says that we will protect a student's privacy. So when it comes to a student's records, there are things you can tell people and things you can't. People who have access and an important responsibility to handle that personal information correctly. Hello, registration. How can I help you? Uh, hi, yeah, this is uh, Jeff Himmelman, and I'm filling out this application for a scholarship. Yes. And, well, I, I need the grade for my leadership class last quarter. I'm sorry, but I can't give that information out over the phone. Listen, but I'm off campus, and if I don't turn this in this afternoon, I'll really be screwed up. Look, I can give you my social security number and everything. What's the problem? Well, I guess one grade can't hurt. From the look of it here, it looks like you got a D last quarter in Dr. Higby's Psych 3394, Motivation and Leadership. Is that what you need? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Politics is dirty business. Ever have someone find out something about you that you didn't want that person to know? That is what the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act is all about. Under FERPA legislation, any current or past record that has a student's name or is identifiable to that student is protected. As you can see, that can quickly add up to a lot of information, some of it private, some of it seemingly common knowledge, all of it protected by FERPA. But you're probably thinking to yourself, isn't some of this considered public information? Well, the answer is yes and no. And it all depends on the individual student. Let's take a look. If we take a student's entire record, we'll have to start removing some things. Obviously, the financial information must go. That tends to be pretty personal information. Oh, and let's pull out those health and counseling records. Any disciplinary reports wouldn't be good to leave in there. And let's yank out the grades. That's very personal. Well, if you pull out the grades, why should just anyone know what classes a person is taking? If a person wants to tell someone how they spend their day, they can do that on their own. So let's take that class schedule out. Pull out a few more odds and ends, and voila! This is it. This is what is considered directory information. Take a look. This is all you can release to the public. It has some typical stuff. Name, address, and phone. Birthday and birthplace is included. There's the major, how long the student has been here, and all the degrees and honors he or she has been awarded. Even says when those degrees were given. The class standing, what high school the student came from, and previous university attended is in there. So is participation in official activities and sports. And of course, height and weight for those team members. Finally, it's common for church-sponsored universities to include church denomination and religious affiliation as part of the directory information. So there it is. Still seems like a lot of information, doesn't it? Well, some students would feel that way. They wouldn't feel comfortable knowing that this information is considered public knowledge. So for students in which extra privacy is desired, FERPA allows for additional protection. Students can request that even this directory information be withheld from the general public and their files will be marked accordingly so that privacy is maintained. In fact, to anyone who asks, the student will simply not exist. Yes? Can I help you? <coughs> yes. My name is Mrs. Himmelman, and I came to see how my son Jeffy is doing in school. Okay, Mrs. Himmelman, could I please see a piece of identification? Oh, sure. Oh, here it is. I know it doesn't look like me, but it is. Okay, well, as you know, it's standard practice to confirm identification before we give out any information. Well, 
I am Jeffy's mom. You can believe me. I'm sure you are, Mrs. Himmelman. I'm sorry, Mrs. Himmelman, but according to our records, your son Jeff is 24 years old. That means he is no longer a dependent. Under federal regulations, I can't release any information about Jeff's grades without his written approval. <sighs> but I have traveled all the way here from Waikiki, and I gave birth to him. He's my boy. I'm sure you did. Just the same, I'm not allowed to give out any information without Jeff's approval. Well, you know, he really is a sweet boy. He's been no trouble at all to raise. In fact, have I ever told you the story about when he was 12? Well, his brothers got really mad at him, took him into the city, and left him there, stark naked, in the middle of the city, and made poor Jeffy run home all by himself. And then, when he was 15, some of his other friends took him to the railroad tracks and laid him on the train. <laughs> As we've covered already, only some information in a student file is considered directory information and is available to the general public. And a student has the right to restrict that directory information for even greater privacy. In all, what you can tell people seems pretty restrictive. You're probably wondering, how can you get work done if you can't access the information? Well, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act is not meant to stand in the way of the educational process. Its intention is to simply make sure that personal information is handled properly. As a result, FERPA legislation grants specific exceptions so that a select group of people can get access to the information without compromising the student's privacy. The first exception is that any university official who has a legitimate educational interest can gain access to relevant student records. But just what does legitimate educational interest mean? And who has a legitimate educational interest? Well, if your job description specifies that you perform a task or service that requires access to records, then you have a legitimate educational interest. How about performing an instructional task directly related to the student's education? That's covered. Disciplining or otherwise supervising a student? That, too, is a legitimate educational interest. Are you a student's advisor of record, graduate program director, or school dean? Then you can gain access to a student's academic records. And if you provide a service or benefit relating to the student or student's family, you can have access to relevant records. An example of this would be those in the university providing health care, counseling, job placement, financial aid, or health and safety as a result of an emergency. These are examples of on-campus university officials, but there are others who can also legally gain access to student information. So our second exception to the rule would be off-campus officials, such as officials of institutions to which a student is transferring, authorized government representatives, agencies providing financial aid, those performing institutional studies, accreditation organizations, executors of a judicial order, and appropriate parties handling a health or safety emergency. So what's our third exception to the rule of confidentiality? Parents of dependent children. And that makes sense. They pay the bills. They should be able to see the records. But a parent can only access student information if that student is under 24 years of age. So once a student's age is 24 or older, parents would need written permission from the student to see his or her file. Dependency status is important to remember when dealing with a parent. The student's dependency status is typically marked and is something to watch for when releasing information. The fourth exception to the rule is simple. If the student wants to waive his or her confidentiality and can give written consent for the university to reveal information. So from highly restrictive to wide open, FERPA gives students a say in how private they want their information to be. Oh, hi, Michelle. 
Hi, Heather. What's up? Not much. Oh, Mitch, there's this guy in my philosophy class, and he's so good-looking you would die. I wish I knew more about him. Well, what's his name? Jeff Himmelman, and he's so good-looking. He's really smart and nice, and I even think he's rich, too. Come on, Mitch, you got to help me out. I want to know more. I can't do that. It's illegal. Illegal? Yes, the Family Educational Right to Privacy Act that was passed in 1974 prohibits me from showing you any of that information. Oh, come on, Michelle, please. I could go to jail. Nah. Ooh, he's from Hawaii. Hawaii? Yeah, Hawaii. Play it right and it's spring break in Aloha land. What's Aloha? It's an island. Oh, cool. What's this? What's what? This. Ooh, looks like he's got a bummer grade in his philosophy class. Oh, and he's supposed to be my study partner. Your study what? My study partner. Oh. Oh, and look, he's on academic probation, and he owes a lot on his student bill. Oh, gosh. Sorry, Heather. Looks like you picked a real loser. Yeah. So ultimately, with all of this information at your fingertips, the student's right to privacy depends on you. Privacy is a precious thing. You're entrusted to take good care of personal information. Think of information as money. If you had money, you wouldn't leave it out where anyone could get at it. Someone might just walk by and take it. Likewise, if you entrusted someone to take care of your money, you wouldn't want them to be careless with it. If they were to just leave it anywhere, it might get stolen. And if they were to handle it improperly, you might lose it just the same. Information is the same way. People have entrusted you with their personal information. It's your responsibility to make sure that it's secure. And in your dealings with that personal information, you should treat it just as if it was your privacy at stake. So what are some simple steps that a responsible record handler should take? First, think about how you deal with information requests. Are you sure who the person is that is asking for that information? check your identification. If they're making a request over the telephone, do you really know who is on the other end of that line? Ask the individual to place the request in person. And do they have a legitimate educational interest in the information? Ask why they need to know. If you are even the slightest bit uncertain about the situation, don't release any information until you've talked to your supervisor. Second, treat records as valuable. Don't leave files out on counters or desks where people could snoop. Lock file cabinets, dispose of files and printouts in a secure fashion. Third, be careful on how you use computer systems. Don't let people peer over your shoulder when you work with a computer. Don't leave combinations or passwords in places where others could steal them. Don't leave your computer system unattended if others could come by and browse. Make sure you log out of network systems. Keep computer files in a secure location. And fourth, don't go where you don't belong. If you don't have a legitimate educational purpose for accessing a student's records, have the decency to respect their confidentiality. People are counting on you to take good care of the private information in your hands. Not only is it your responsibility, it's the law. Now, Janet, remember to pay attention to details. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I've been here many years, and I still have to ask my boss questions, too. OK? OK. Special Agent Johnson, Seattle Office, Secret Service. I need all your records on Jeff Himmelman. Boss? Boss! So what do you do if you don't know what to do? The rule is simple. When in doubt, ask. It is important to be prepared. Our university has a written policy stating how the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act is implemented. Take the time to read it and ask questions beforehand. 
That way you can clear up any confusion before you're on the front lines. The written policy will cover specific issues that are not covered in this program, and it will be updated periodically to reflect legislative and administrative changes. Once confidential information escapes, it is no longer confidential. That privacy can never be recovered. If you're uncertain about a request for information, stop. Review the written policy. Ask your supervisor for assistance if you need to. But whatever you do, don't release any information until you are certain that you have the right to do so. Inevitably, situations will come up that aren't entirely covered in the written policy and are beyond the experience of you or that of your supervisor. In these cases, consult the university registrar. But once again, do not release any information until you feel that you have the right to do so. If you're going to be wrong, it's better to make a mistake on the side of caution. Even if you're later overruled, the registrar understands your situation and will always support your decision to be cautious. Oh, now I know what happened. But I don't. Well, you see, you teach philosophy. Jeff Himmelman's a business major. So unless you're his advisor or you have written permission, you can't ever see his transcript. She's right. Don't let it happen again. Who was that masked man? Can't tell ya. His file's marked confidential. <laughs> 